G'day everyone, welcome to another edition of uh, Fly Fishing in Nature's Realm. Uh, my name's Bruce Smith and uh, today we're going to tie a new fly. And I say new because this fly represents a certain insect. Now the fly itself is just basically an elk hair caddis, but it's tied differently um, in its proportions. Okay, But what this fly does, it represents a insect that hatches on the Golden River, a caddis that hatches on the Golden River. And let me tell you guys, when the trout are taking this caddis, it is spectacular. You know, like it's these trout um, just go crazy to catch these caddis flying just a, a few inches above the water surface. And um, they will, I've seen trout. You know, leap out of the water trying to catch them and then they'd miss them and then loop again miss them loop again and on the third go bang they've caught this caddis and it's just spectacular guys i'll tell you now my experience uh, is that these caddis only hatch for a short period of time all right not a long period um and it could be um two to three weeks would be my guess. I could be wrong. They might hatch a little bit longer or maybe even a little bit shorter. But let me tell you guys, if you ever come across these caddis hatching on the Goldwyn, you're in for a real treat, let me tell you. Now, the difference between this caddis and a lot of other caddis is because of its size. It's big, guys. I use a size eight hook, all right, when I tie this fly. Another particular or another certain aspect of this caddis is it has a bright or lime fluorescent type green egg sac, all right, as it flies. So, it's, you know, these caddis um, females are laying the eggs um, as they're hovering and flying above the surface. And um, its body is a sort of like a, a bony color shape and it's got a wing that is like a cinnamon brown. It's absolutely incredible, guys. Totally, totally different from a lot of uh, other caddis that you see on our rivers and lakes and so forth. But this, let me tell you guys, when the tree out was taking them, it is unbelievable. Just absolutely spectacular. So, we're gonna tie this fly. Now, like I say, this fly is just an elk hair caddis, but we tie it in a bigger size. Size eight hook, all right? will include an egg case, body, and so forth with a brown deer habit at the top. So the materials you'll need, I'll put in front right now. You can uh, pause that, write down the uh, actual details of it, and um, you will have all the materials needed to start tying this fly. So the hook that we use is a size eight, just the normal one. Um, down eye, straight eye, up eye, it's your choice, guys. I think I have tied um, because I've been fishing this fly and fishing this caddis for over you know 30 years and um, I think I've tied up flies with an up eye and that can be an advantage but it's no uh, no real big deal um, so at the moment I've got a down eye now the thread will start to tie this fly in the thread we need is 6-0 um, use a 6-0 because it's got a lot more strength than 8-0 and because it's a big fly you don't really need uh, to be a real fine thread, okay? So let's start off by tying the thread onto the hook. We start that just below the hook eye. Okay. Wind down towards the bend of the hook. Stop about halfway, cut away the sur surplus there, and then advance back down. Then when we get to the barb, or in line with the barb of the hook, we want to come down just a few more turns. Because when you see this caddis, the egg sac at the back, it's really extended right down, and uh, so you need to go out a little bit further. Now the material that we're using for the egg sac is this one that I uh, bought. This is a brand. matches the colour beautifully. Uh, this is called Mini Fritz. And... Uh, it is a green or cartreuse fluoro, as you can see here. 
and we'll cut off a section of that and we'll now tie this at the position we're at. A surplus in. Didn't get it right. Okay. Now we grab that, and this is like a chenille, but very, very fine chenille, and it won't absorb that much water, uh, creating any detriment to its floatability. Uh, that won't occur, guys. So let's wrap that. Around. One more to make it just nice and round. Then we tie that off, guys. Cut away the excess. All right. And there we have the egg sack at the back of the uh, hook there. And uh, this chenille reel, it's got a little bit of a sparkle in it, so it's going to add a bit of an attraction to the actual um, fly. So that's a, that's a good one there. Now, because we're creating a body hackle, we now need to tie in a length of copper wire. All right, Get the finest copper wire you possibly can and then we tie it in at this point here and you don't need to go all the length of the hook chain just a little bit past it and we'll tie that right down and then come back to the point we started at there right now guys now we need to create the body now the body as I said to you if you look at this if you ever do come across this caddis have a look at it close up you'll see that the body coloration is a, like a, a, a yellowish bony color. It's uh, quite uh, unique amongst a lot of the caddis that you see on, the, uh, on our rivers and streams. Um, a few people have tried to tell me that this is a stonefly. It's not, guys. It's ab absolutely a caddis. And um, as I say, we need to use a yellowish bony color material and this is super fine dubbing guys it's a waterproof dubbing it's excellent for dry flies dubs on beautifully and we'll build up the body just a small amount or in its diameter make it the smallest you possibly can at the back of the hook here and then build up its diameter as we go along won't let it touch more That's about it guys, so I'll put just a little bit too much dub in there, so we'll just uh, pull that away or snip it away, nice remaining bit dub that, and then put that on so there. Okay, so that's the body complete, pretty easy this far, don't worry about that, very easy indeed. Now we need the body hackle. Now I like, a lot of people like the red brown cock hackle, but I like to use a ginger for this fly. It represents, um, the ginger colour, represents that lightish colouration of the, bottle, uh, the body. So it's sort of like, you know, 
blends in with it a lot better. Now you can use a cape, like I've got here, um, but I like the saddle feathers, all right? So I got a, a sort of nondescript one where this saddle, it actually has the ginger in amongst a lot of different other colors. It's sort of like a, a hybrid type cape, you know what I mean? There's, there's black feathers in there, these um, feathers with the ginger outside and uh, the dark uh, black in the center and it's also got the actual ginger as well. So that's what I use and I've got these set aside at the moment and let's tie that in guys at the point that we're at right now. Tie that in, and then we work the hackle. Well, that slipped out. Let's do that again, guys. Tug off the actual few fibers off the stem, so you've got um, something to tie in. It would be better purchase there. Now you can make the body hackle to any thickness you want. Right? You can make it have a lot of hackle fibers, medium amount or low amount. It's up to yourself. I like to have about a medium amount of fibers there guys, just so that I can get a good float from this fly because you know, the higher this floats, the better you know, the trout will take it. And grab the copper wire so that we can then trap that hackle in. Now wave it through. let go of the other or the end of the feather there and make these turns as even as you possibly can until we get to the front there which is what we want and then we tie that off guys Cut away the copper wire and that body hackle further the remaining bit there. Let's cut that away as well. Alright, any stray fibers, let's tidy it up a bit. That's good. Alright, now the last part is the wing. Now I like to use to imitate the cinnamon brown colour of the actual natural. I use the deer hair in that brown colour. So like a, a chocolatey type brown. And um, just grab yourself a small bunch. Now, if you can feel it, you, you just don't want too many guys, all right? So, you'll feel it, you'll get used to it after you've tied a few of these. You'll get a feel of what you need and how it feels in your fingertips. And I can feel straight away that that amount of fibers is just too much and I need to take a few away until you get that, that one that you know is the right one. That's the right amount there, I can just feel that. All right, judge your wing up. You want the fibers to bypass the back of the uh, the uh, fly by about say, you know, just a touch. All right, so like uh, there, and then bring your forefinger, thumb and forefinger up, and then trap it down tight with a few wraps. We don't want 
the fibers extending to the back of the hook spinning if anything this little head that we've created out will spin for us and then there's our wing and when manipulate the wing too so that we have the fibers equally on each side and what that does it will balance the fly when it lands on the water we don't want it tipping over if we possibly can even though I don't think that plays too much of a, a problem and then just make sure that's tied down nice and tight and then come back under the head a couple of turns there and now what we do is we whip finish pretty awkward doing with your hands guys use a whip finishing tool absolutely imperative done make sure the fibers pass the hook eye there and get our scissors and then cut it off like that. Now, next thing we need to do is make the head, those um, extended fibers at the front there, we need to equal them and move them up just so it's a, a nice little head. As you know, when you do do an elk ear cutters, it's the same here, guys. that's good and then again manipulate those fibers so it is even to the sides there all right and there you go boys this is what I call the golden caddis because it's imitating an insect that comes from the golden river if there's anyone out there that has seen these uh, caddis that I'm talking about and um, you have seen it leave a comment saying yeah I've seen this caddis not only uh, in the Golden River but I've seen it at such and such and such and such I'd be wrapped with that because you know I, I I've fished a lot of streams and a lot of rivers guys in my uh, time in fly fishing um, that many and I've never seen this hatch but the other thing is I've got a feeling that this only hatches at a certain time for some certain reason for a short time all right and so if that's the case and they are at other locations the same thing's going to happen again there'll be a lot of fly fishermen that haven't seen this particular caddis on the say the golden because they just don't fish enough you know like i was a fly fishing guide for like 15 years and i was going up to the golden river probably four or five days a week all right all the way from Melbourne. And I'd love a dollar for every time that I fish the Golden River. Um, I'd be a, a wealthy man, seriously. Um, and, you know, I'm up there a lot. And I only came across this caddis, this natural caddis insect, on a few occasions. There's one time there I was with a client, and um, it was amazing. Um, he saw these caddis hatching. It was the only client that I've had that's seen these catches, uh, hatches, uh, these cat, uh, caddis hatching, and let me tell you guys, it was just amazing. It really was. He was, he was amazed too. Um, it just uh, freaked everyone out, or freaked us out, you know. Um, so yeah, guys, um, tie a few of these up. Have a few in your your uh, tackle boxes um, because. One day you may come across this hatch and then you'll be in business because you've got that fly there. It might sit there for a long time and not do anything, but let me tell you, um, if it does happen, you're going to be laughing. All right then, guys. Um, well, that's it for this episode. Now, in the next episode, 
I'm going to show you how to tie a caddis larvae of this insect, this actual, or that natural caddis on the Goulburn River, the larval stage. I've got a fly, a reticular fly, that works well and imitates the larval stage perfectly. G'day guys, thought I'd uh, interject here. Um, as you realise, I uh, created this video uh, about a week ago and um, in the video I uh, asked um, people that do watch my videos whether they had seen uh, the caddis that is particular to the Goulburn River and um, I was talking to a gentleman by the name of Rod Barford. Now Rod, uh, he was telling me that uh, this uh, gold caddis on the Goulburn River is uh, not only particular to the Goulburn but it can be found on a number of other rivers, you know, the Mitter Mitter rivers, any of those uh, tailwater rivers. Um, the, there are, you know, good numbers, um, but they are reducing. And this is the great thing about Rod. Rod, not only is he, a, uh, he's been a guide for uh, 30 years or longer, um, not only Rod is a good fly fisher, he's a great fly tire, and also he is so concerned with the environment it's not funny and um, he's done a lot of field research for a lot of uh, you know, fisheries and uh, other government departments uh, through his guiding work and uh, yeah he's, uh, he's uh, really concerned with the environment, the environment. and um, you know we both believe that uh, siltation is a major problem in our rivers and streams so um, you know that's something that uh, we need to address and uh, you know, we're discussing ways that we might be able to um, do something like that. Um, but he was saying that uh, this caddis uh, can be found um, within Victoria. It's, uh, it's basically found only in Victoria. Um, no other states um, so far uh, that we know of uh, have uh, this caddis. But um, yeah, it's interesting to note that um, you know, he uh, has seen this caddis on the Goulburn River like myself. And um, he ties a fly, which is just um, a real fly. I'll show you the photo of it right now. You'll see it come up now. Now this, this fly, what a representation of an insect. Um, it's just fantastic, it really is. And it's got all the ingredients that uh, I have of my fly, you know, I just tie a simple elk here caddis, but he ties it to uh, you know, a greater dimension there. And uh, what a fly it is, guys, it's fantastic. And um, I'm sure Rod will probably give you the recipe if you uh, ever need to ask him. But um, yeah, Rod uh, has seen this uh, caddis on the Goulburn River. And like I say, guys, it's fantastic. So. Um, Arm yourself up with uh, you know, the fly eye tied or with a fly like rods, and um, you know, you really, you know, if you do experience a uh, caddis hatch on a goblin of uh, this uh, type, then uh, you're going to have a ball, guys. All right, so I just thought I'd uh, uh, slot that in um, in regards with uh, Rod Barfoot. And again, anyone else has had uh, any experiences with this caddis, please let me know um, because. Uh, you know, I like to uh, get as much knowledge as I can. So this is uh, Bruce Smith saying goodbye and um, see you in the next episode of Fly Fishing in Nature's Realm. Bye for now.